There we go. All right, it's a new episode in studio. I got to shoot these on the shorter break, though, because you, you can only allow so many minutes on YouTube. And I've shot them before where it's... You had 11 minutes left on your camera. On the camera? Yeah. You know why I have 11 minutes on the camera? It's because there's... Uh, videos of my son's hermit crabs on there so <laughs> he like he likes to shoot videos of his hermit crabs and then never has me upload them to the computer oh, there we go a24 and welcome back to the john justice show 79 degrees outside on 1041 the truth a high around 92 we'll get your extended forecast from Kega 9 on your side's Brian Basham, less than 10 minutes from now. So was Gabby Giffords looking to take advantage of CD8 homeowners trying to grab private property while it was depressed? She posed two questions to the readiness subcommittee. Or I'm sorry, one question um, to two individuals. Given the current recession and general decrease in demand for land and development, are you considering spending more funds now on additional real estate purchases to take advantage of decreased prices? Could you execute additional funds if this committee uh, decided to provide them? Now, to the two individuals she asked, one of them was uh, in regards to the increase in, uh, an increase in, in uh, easements a need for easements around Fort Huachuca. The other one was the encroachment of private development potentially threatening the future of Davis Moth and Air Force Base. According to the article I have here in front of me, it certainly is important to protect the mission of these two uh, vital bases. Gifford suggested the solution would be to buy up the property cheap. One might think the Giffords was simply looking for a way to save the taxpayers a few bucks, but it's hard to draw that conclusion when only 11 days earlier she all oh, voted in favor of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, which added a minimum of $789 billion, and some say as much as $3.27 trillion over the next 10 years, to the national debt without creating any sustainable stimulus or job growth. Aside from the fact that she couldn't show up to her job as a member of the subcommittee, Giffords had the audacity to suggest that the Army and Air Force take advantage of the bad economic situation of her constituents and buy up the land on the cheap. Now, Mr. Easton, the Assistant Secretary of the Army, responded to Giffords' misguided question by flatly stating, current real estate market conditions do not drive land acquisitions. Mr. Billings had a similar answer saying the timing of the Air Force real estate purchases is based on a mission-driven requirement and timelines independent of real estate market conditions. Adding, in exercising good stewardship to taxpayer funds, the Air Force only purchases property when the mission requires that level of real estate control so we do not have idle, unutilized, or otherwise unproductive real estate in the Air Force industry. Giffords asked this question on record to the committee. Giffords seems to have wanted her question and her responses to be on record for some reason. Whatever that reason, it seems apparent she wasn't giving much consideration to her constituents who own property around those bases or that she had their best interests in mind. The article goes on to say, now I suppose Giffords might attempt to explain this by simply saying she wanted the Air Force and Army um, intention on record because she was trying to protect her constituents from a possible government land grab. But that doesn't really make sense either. If that were the case, why would she suggest that the committee might provide additional funds to purchase the property? It seems clear that uh, it seems clear that her constituents who own property in proximity to the two military bases were not given any consideration. With all the economic woes piled on families in the 8th District over the last two years, Gifford should have been advocating for them and not some hidden agenda. I suspect most voters in the district were not even aware that this occurred. I mean, and this is the M.O. for Giffords, though. I mean, this is, this is why she was able to beat Tim B. last time. I mean, this is why the polls are still close now. I mean, the last one I saw with her and Jesse Kelly was a dead heat. You've got to dig deep when it comes to Giffords. Now, Grijalva, not so much. I mean, everybody knows he's a buffoon. He wants single-payer health care, called for a boycott of the state. That's easy. Giffords, on the other hand, has done a very good job of attempting to craft herself as his blue dog Democrat when she's just, she's not. She's Nancy Pelosi's yes person. She's incredibly left-leaning. She's just done a very, very good job of keeping it below the surface 
and not out in the public ether as much as other individuals are. Listen, if you had a situation in CD8 where it wasn't, where there weren't so many conservatives and you didn't have a Tea Party to contend with, you would see her being much, uh, well, being more blatant in her left leanings. You absolutely would. But you don't, because you see her trying to play to her base in all of this. And it's what she continues to do now. She's a liberal. There is no doubt about it. And a big government liberal at that, who voted for your health care freedom to be diminished, which is probably going to cost you more in premiums, going to lower your choice and quality of care. She voted for the stimulus package as well. And it seems as if she doesn't really have her constituents in mind back when the housing market crashed. But then again, she wasn't really fighting for anything then, was she? 751-1041 is the phone number. More of the John Justice Show coming up. McCain says his dreams of the presidency are over. Many of you can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> 8.30, time for your ABC News update. The station where two shots and still made it in under the wire. Didn't run out of time yet.